You can toe the line when it comes to investing. Choose the stocks you like one by one. Or select sector spider ETFs and add the diversification of an entire sector of the S&P 500, like financial. With liquidity, all-day tradability, and transparency. Ready to add diversification to your equity investments? Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Go to SectorSpiders.com for perspectives containing this information. Read it carefully. Visit us at SectorSpiders.com. John Bogle, founder of the Vanguard Group, continues his relentless crusade against ETF investing. Is he right or is he wrong? I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide. Let's dissect John Bogle's anti-ETF arguments together and we'll let you decide. Argument number one, massive ETF daily trading volume shows that funds are being used to speculate. So if people are speculating with ETFs, for example, ticker symbol SPY and GLD, and we know some of them do. Does that mean that all ETFs should be avoided, as Bogle seems to suggest? I mean, every day people speculate with stocks, they speculate with bonds, they even speculate with mutual funds. Does all this speculative behavior in these types of assets suddenly invalidate them as long-term investments? And if not, then why should it invalidate investing in ETFs? In reality, high trading volume in ETFs is actually good for investors because it creates market liquidity which results in higher or tighter bid-ask spreads. The end result is lower frictional trading costs when the investor decides it's time to buy or sell their ETF. Does John Bogle oppose the lower trading costs that high volume ETFs have introduced? Well, I certainly hope not. Argument number two. Narrowly focused and leveraged long short ETFs have infected the business. One of Bogle's chief arguments against ETFs is the rise of specialty funds that use leverage or go short or aren't broadly diversified. Incidentally, these very same types of narrowly focused products exist in the significantly larger hedge fund and mutual fund world, but since Bogle has a special hatred uh, for ETFs, that usually goes unmentioned. Today, there are around 8,700 mutual funds and around 1,800 ETFs. So whatever shortcomings that Bogle wants to find in the ETF marketplace, there's simply a microcosm of problems in the much larger mutual fund marketplace, which has been birthing questionable investment strategies since 1924. That's well before ETFs were even an embryo. Argument number three, ETFs tempt people to become day traders. A study by uh, Vogel's, Vogel's very own Vanguard in 2012 uh, titled uh, ETFs for Better or Better rejected the populist notion that ETFs have converted mom and pop investors into day traders. In fact, the study found, quote, the majority of both traditional mutual fund and ETF investments in our data set are categorized as buy and hold investments. 83% and 62% respectively. This result appears contrary to conjectures in the media that most ETF investors are trading ETFs for speculative purposes. In fact, we found little evidence of speculative behavior in either share structure." End of quote. Argument number four, and this is the final one, mutual fund investors are less prone to self-destructive behavioral problems. Rooted in Bogle's advocacy of mutual funds over ETFs is this insinuation that mutual funds instigate good behavior among investors, whereas ETFs don't. In fact, financial research, if we really look at this closely, contradicts this cute but in incorrect theory that mutual fund investors, yes, even index fund investors, are behaviorally superior because of the financial vehicles that they're choosing. In fact, a 10-year study by Morningstar revealed major discrepancies between the actual results that fund investors get versus what a fund actually returns. Analysis in seven mutual fund categories showed asset-weighted 10-year investor returns actually trailed average 10-year fund returns. What does this mean? 
The data very clearly demonstrates that investors with suicidal tendencies will find a way to self-destruct no matter what type of investments they buy. Put another way, a mutual fund doesn't make anyone more disciplined than an ETF. Perhaps the biggest weakness in Bogle's anti-ETF battle is his insistence that ETFs are the instigators for the behavioral biases that get people into trouble. Do automobiles cause accidents, or is it poor driving? Should we outlaw automobiles? In Bogle's world, blame the products, not the people who abuse or misuse the tools. Faulting and singling out ETFs only reinforces bad behavior. Shouldn't we be teaching the investing public to take full responsibility for the investment's decisions, good or bad, that they make? Sadly, Bogle doesn't do that whenever he scapegoats ETFs for whatever misfortunes that people may encounter. It's a good thing Vanguard never followed Bogle's anti-ETF stance, or they'd still be stuck in the dark ages like so many other mutual fund companies. In the end, there's no questioning John Bogle's monumental influence in the field of finance and investing over the past 40 years. And that's why, for a man of his stature, his radical views about ETF investing are all the more shocking. I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide. Thanks for watching another episode of Marketplace Minute. Thank you.